and granted, like some of your role pieces you no longer have now on your roster, but like, are you willing to give up a little bit of your culture? No. You're willing to, I'm not giving up Andrew Wiggins, seeing the yeah. way he defended. I, I'm, I'm not doing that yeah. to my core. Right. right. Now. They already gave up their culture the first time, and then he just completely turned his back on it for whatever reason when it comes to Kevin Durant. So why would you want to have a chance to have somebody to forgive them for that? No. If I'm Golden State, I'm not. There's no way in God's earth I'm doing that. There's no way. Nothing against Kevin Durant. But something we won before you, we won with you, and we won without you again. What do we got to prove to you? The same. I mean, uh, it, <laughs> I, I get how it works basketball-wise, but culture over everything. Yeah, no doubt about that. Out in the boogie down Bronx, which superstar would benefit the most from team with Kevin Durant and why? Hey, guys. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. Appreciate love you. you. Love y'all show, man. What up, Thank baby? You. Appreciate um, you. I think that uh, for uh, – for sure, uh, Luka Doncic could definitely benefit the most from Kevin Durant because they have, like, this yin and yang between Luka Doncic is, like, more bubbly, more fun personality, and I think KD needs a little bit of that, too, because, <laughs> you know, they they, they have they have some pieces in place where they could have possibly got through it, and now with the departure of Jalen Brunson, KP's gone, they need the size, they need more more firepower on that team, I feel like they he'll definitely benefit from from Luca. Oh look, man, I'm telling you, Audi, like the thought experiment of K D and Luca on the same squad, I mean, has me like a giddy little girl. I mean, to think about what that would be. The, the, the GLG, Giddy it, Little Girl it, it Theory. It would be so next level because of the skill set on the court and how Luka is a facilitator. And I agree with what he said personality-wise to lighten the mood for KD. It feels like there's some heaviness that comes with that. Mm -hmm. Right? Heavy is the head that wears a crown. Yeah. But yeah. what does Brooklyn get back in return? Like, And that's the biggest thing. When you look at these trades, you're saying, oh, Luka and KD – it sounds great when you have their names together in the sure, bucket, right. but if you're Brooklyn, what, what are you giving me back it's, other than draft assets? You have nothing to give me back. See, I don't even care about the draft assets. I like the fact that people are matching up superstars with him that would benefit each other. It's not just, okay, it's just benefiting Kevin Durant or just benefiting the superstar. He said, this is why both would benefit. And we've heard that so far from people, whether it's Luka, Jason Tatum, Damian Lillard. So I get it. In the NBA, things got to match up. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. And you know me, I'm not a hypothetical person. I don't like fantasy land. I don't mind this kind of fantasy land because of people trying to make sense with reality. The reality is, to your point, what if the Brooklyn Nets don't wind up trading Kevin Durant? Jay Will and Max. Kevin Durant, this is what you get for aligning your force with Kyrie Irving. I got to say this, though. From Sean Marks and Joe Sy, good for them. And people can say, oh, Freddie, you're a Kyrie Irving hater. Mm -mm, I don't hate on Kyrie Irving. It's maybe the biggest catastrophe we've seen in sports about what this team could have been. But what's the old line? KYP, know your personnel. You got to know who you're getting involved with, your Kevin Durant. But it gets to a certain point where enough is enough. What did you think was going to happen when you two guys got together? And everybody is using this word, how do you accommodate KD and Kyrie? weren't worried about making us, making it work for us. You know, I'm not worried about accommodating Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. I'm worried about accommodating my franchise. What is good with you today at the July 4th? He's Jay Williams and Freddie Coleman in for the boys today on Keyshawn, Jay Will and Max, presented by Progressive Insurance on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Series X Channel 80 and ESPN2. Oh, we're going to get to more of your phone calls regarding Kevin Durant mm -hmm. and which superstar he needs to play next to and why which superstar needs him at 888 espn 888 But you made the point because the, it was put out there by our man, Andre, uh, Mark J. Spears of the uh, Fanscape, that Kevin Durant, a reunion to the Golden State Warriors, he floated that out there over the week on ESPN Radio. And you and I had a conversation yesterday, Jay Will, that the minute you heard that, and I could see it in your eyes right now, and I felt it in your voice, I didn't even see it in your face yesterday, that you said, man, Freddie, this is not a good idea. As a, as a fan of Kevin Durant's unicorn ability on the basketball court, I don't want to see it. I, I, I don't want to see it because of how other people will then define his legacy by that, right? Now, going there the first time, I wouldn't have recommended it, but in his reasoning, it was because of basketball. I actually understood that from a basketball IQ perspective mm -hmm. because the way Golden State plays with how you can, their continuity in which they play off.
way it's blowing up now currently, Kyrie Irving is trying to get to L.A. to play with LeBron James, Mm -hmm. but he was just playing with you because of a deal. So even though we know the nuances of that, that didn't work out deal-wise, it still just looks bad, right? He's Mm -hmm. leaving Kevin Durant to go back to LeBron James. Right. So it makes you question that and who was leading and who was taking charge of that relationship. Even though this may not be true, that's where you start going with it, right? And then on top of that, the Golden State Warriors just won a damn championship. (laughs) We've seen this before. (laughs) And you got people out here talking. Key was like, so, Key straight up asked me, so what's really the difference between Harrison Barnes and, you know, and Wiggins and KD? He's like, they all got you chips, right? And I was like, oh, oh, Key. Yeah. Key. And we started, obviously, we talk about the details, right? Sure. KD's very different. And he wasn't saying that. He knows KD's different, right? Key's on busting chops. Who knew? It all led to championships. So then people started running with that narrative. I'm like, see, y'all ain't going to do that. I ain't going to allow y'all to do that. Right. But if you were to find a way to go back after the, oh, so you, you came here. And then you won, and you decide to do it, but you can't do it without Steph. You can't do it without Clay or Dre. Mm -hmm. And now after you saw them win, now you're going to run back with your tail between your legs. Even though we know it's not the case, people will make it out to be that way. Yes. And I would hate that for him individually. I would hate it for him. Here's why you hate it for him. And I'm not trying to speak for another man, but I'm about to speak for another man. I wouldn't let that deal go through. Well, the deal... I, I firmly believe it's not going to happen anyway. I'm like, I'll stay here in Brooklyn. I'm not going back yeah, close. It, but we'll put it this way. If you decide to do something like that, then you really give credence to what people have been saying about you, that you want to be a follower and you don't want to be a leader. So from that standpoint, I'm with you. I wouldn't want to see that for Kevin Durant. But something that you just said really struck me funny about this whole thing, why you don't want to see it. And here's why. Because you care a lot more for Kevin Durant's legacy as much as he does. The difference is when you're speaking out for him, he strikes back at people without receipts. And there are plenty of times that people say, see, that's why. That's why we say those things about you. And that's not to say that being thin-skinned is a problem. Hey, I don't walk in Kevin Durant's shoes. I don't know how he's supposed to feel. He can only determine that. But I know people kept clapping back at me that way, especially guys that I respected, that I grew up watching, wanting to be a basketball player. Yeah, it's going to hurt me to my soul. Say, why do you keep criticizing me? But you can't keep giving people reasons. And you can't keep giving people enough evidence to say, this is why we say these things. So I understand, Jay, well, why you want that for Kevin Durant? Because you dealt with it. You're sick and tired of people clapping at you when you're trying to do the right thing. To me, Kevin Durant tries to do the right thing. To me, he just goes about it in the wrong way when it comes to his basketball career and his legacy. And here's the problem, though, Freddie, is the problem is that now that you're signed to this four-year deal, like, and, and once again, I stated this in the first hour, I am all about player empowerment. Watching what LeBron James has been able to do at multiple franchises, even though it gets difficult, still the success rate is pretty high. Absolutely. Even though right now, like, they're in a little bit of a quell and people are starting like, oh, look what happens. When you... Fine, they won your championship two and a half years ago. I get whatever you've done for me lately. But, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, the KD situation with Kyrie, and I'm saying, man, I wish – that there was a way that KD could find a team like a Portland where Dame, who is, granted, when he's not injured, but you know what you're going to get all the time. Oak Town. You know what time it is all the time. And there's also a part of me as, you know, somebody that, you know, as I've been around owners, I've talked to presidents of teams, you know, I've thought about going down that direction in my life. There are certain junctures where it's like, yo, man, at the same time, I know you gave me a list of teams you want to go to. I don't have to move you anywhere. And I I need you to know what time it is. I know how powerful you are. And if this goes to arbitration, then so be it. But just because you want to be moved Mm -hmm. because it didn't work out for what you needed us to do for your teammate. Yeah. I'm doing what's in the best interest of my franchise. And for me, unless I get a haul back, unless I'm getting six, seven first round picks, I'm getting two all-star caliber players, some assortment that looks like that, Mm -hmm. that is a package bigger than what Minnesota, you know, gave up for Rudy Gobert. You're not going anywhere, man. You're going to be right here. You're going to be a Brooklyn Net until we get the right opportunity. And if we don't, then we're going to have to manage that. And I'm going to challenge you to see how professional are you truly when it comes to, I know how professional you are to basketball, to the game of basketball, but the business of basketball 
Now I'm going to challenge you to see how professional you are in that regard. Great stuff by Jay Will talking about the future. Kevin Durant, what that future is going to look like. As a matter of fact, in 35 minutes here on Keyshawn, Jay Will and Max and ESPN Radio and ESPN2, I'm going to find out from Jay Will, what if the Brooklyn Nets don't trade Kevin Durant? That comes in about 35 minutes. But speaking of Kevin Durant, more of your calls, getting a lot of great reaction from you at Triple H, say ESPN, 888-729-3776. Which superstar would benefit the most from teaming up with Kevin Durant and why? Don in California, which one is it? Hey, what's going on, guys? Appreciate what's you. up, Thanks Don? For taking my you. call. Absolutely. Um, what's up? What's going on, Jay? What's going on, guys? I got a few points if possible. Obviously, um, I think Memphis, nobody's ever talking about mm. that. If he goes to Memphis with John and them, with that culture and what they got going, I mean, um, I remember the Grindhouse back in the day when Gasol, I mean, they've given the Warriors fits, right? Mm-hmm. And Curry always has his worst games there. Um, so I think that would be a good spot with him. I think uh, KD's going to surprise us, right? I, I remember when he went to the Warriors. I mean, no one had a clue. I think he's very unpredictable, so I think his next spot, it's just going to surprise everybody. Um, Vegas, um, just on, on, on that train of thought, um, the Suns, Vegas has them as the favorite now, so I don't know what that means, and Brooklyn's not even in the conversation. So I don't know what that means, but that's a possible spot too, but there's nothing he can. Warriors are going back to back. I'm a diehard warrior fan. I've been watching them forever. Um, I, 